serious effects of climate change over the next 10 to 50 years will center on the availability of resources that are essential for daily survival, like water, food, energy, and waste management. In 2015, up to 96% of St. Lucia's population had access to potable water, with 53% of households obtaining their drinking water via pipes to their house or yard, Bottled water and piped water obtained from outside the home accounted for 15% and 24% respectively. An additional 4% of households used public standpipes as their main source of water. The remainder of households, 3%, used unimproved drinking water sources, especially rainwater. This means that further improvements in living conditions require piped water directly to just fewer than 50% of the households on the island. Other sectors that also heavily rely on access to potable water include agriculture, tourism, public facilities and government operations. The drive to improve the delivery of drinking water to an increasing population and growing tourism sector during the last decades have resulted in significant increases in water withdrawal and consumption. This places major importance on preserving the quality and stored volume of surface water, which is the primary source serving all sectors in the country. The fact is, St. Lucia is currently facing a water deficit. This is due to increasing consumption and, most importantly, to large losses resulting from illegal connections leakages from water mains, and metering errors. These point to the need for improved water management to support a sustainable supply of drinking water to the population. It is estimated that St. Lucia has a water supply deficit of about 35%. This is part of the reason why sections of the island are periodically placed under water rationing. Here, Available data shows a maximum production of 5.5 billion gallons in 2012, while only 1.9 billion gallons were accounted for. As the water supply company, Wasco, continues to improve its distribution system to an expanding housing sector, it is likely that wastage will be reduced by 2030. Consumption, however, will continue to increase. By 2030, it is projected that the water supply deficit affecting the island will increase to 40 or even 45 percent due to decreasing precipitation levels, higher intensity and frequency of droughts, and higher consumption in the domestic and agricultural sector as a result of increasing temperatures. To address this projection, rainwater harvesting at the household levels is encouraged and Wasco is already preparing for groundwater exploration. The thing about groundwater sources is it's, um, it can be expensive to exploit, to exploit because groundwater exploration is very similar to oil exploration. The, the same processes happen except um, oil is a bit more expensive than water. So imagine you're undertaking an activity where the investment, initial investment is the same but the cost of the product is not. <laughs> so, yeah. But yes, um, I think for us, it, it's more, we're looking at it more as a, a feel safe. We, because for one thing, we still need to do some research to find out recharge rates and whatever, because one of the things you want to know is that if you're going to exploit groundwater, you need to know how fast whilst you're taking it out, how fast it's refilling. You need to know, it has to be sustainable, right? Because you don't want to just use it up because then you have nothing. You want to, so we need to establish recharge rates and stuff. But fortunately, we're not at a state, we're not at a point where we need to go out and, you know, make use of it. But it's good that we know that it's there. So we can, you know, try and explore it and develop it and use it when the time when it's necessary. Without sound planning, groundwater extraction 
could lead to saline intrusion along coastal zones, degradation of fertile soils, and could otherwise have severe negative consequences for the health of forests on a small island through reduction of stream flows in the dry seasons. Accelerating the death of forests in this way points to a haunting scenario of the future for biodiversity. These images of the future leave desalination of seawater as a more reasonable option beyond 2030. This is already happening in neighboring islands like Barbados, and at least one St. Lucian entrepreneur is leading the way at home.